Okay, so we're now live on Facebook. Let me start then. Yes. Uh, well, good morning, everyone, uh, to our students um, from all over Southeast Asia, Japan, uh, as well as those who are joining us on this very interesting webinar today. Uh, for those who are not in the class, we want you to know that there are about 31 students um, from different Southeast Asian countries, of course, as well as a large a number of Japanese students who are part of a joint program that the Aten Manila has with the University of Peace in Costa Rica. So all of these 31 students are involved in that program uh, and, uh, and, and I think are learning uh, both in the Philippines as well as in Costa Rica when they connect there later on. Uh, we have two very uh, experienced presenters <clears throat> in the Mindanao world. And as we know, the Mindanao world is a very complex area. We tend to think of it at the, recently as warfare, um, you know, large scale negotiations with government. But what the class readings and discussions have shown also that at the ordinary community people, men, women, children, youth, older people still try to live their lives as they can. In anthropology, we talk about their everyday lives, whether it's in the inter interstices of peacetime, so-called, or between, uh, between warfare or during low intensity conflicts, but somehow coming to terms with whatever is happening, they have to live, survive, and hope for a future. So we have two people today who will be presenting the range of aspects of how one understands community and connects with them as the people <clears throat> who are really living their lives and whose stories need to be told, hopefully by they themselves, but by others, social scientists and others who enable them to speak. And that's kind of the purpose of the, this section of the course on research methods in a transdisciplinary setting. Uh, the first speaker will be Nin Sapalo, followed by uh, <clears throat> Dr. Joel Kanudai. Brief, briefly, Nin, Nin Sapalo is an anthropology graduate student at the University of the Philippines. She, but interestingly, that's just one of her uh, involvement. She is also teaching in the Filipino department of the University of the Philippines and has done a, extensive research on many aspects of people's lives in, in the spirit of engaged anthropology, just trying to enable people's uh, voices to come out and to the extent that she can help formulate those views, she writes serious uh, research pieces published in journals, but also um, anthrop um, advocacy pieces which are published in more popular forms. Um, so uh, we're very happy to have uh, Nin Sapala with us today. She will be followed by Dr. Jose Joel Canudai, whom many of us already know as the chair of our Department of Sociology and Anthropology. But before he actually joined the Ateneo, he was in contact with us through his various commitments in Mindanao, uh, both as a journalist, um, investigative type journalist, connecting very much with people and um, on peace panels and being very active in the political aspects of development there, but always linking in with people at grassroots level because it's their struggle in the end and it's they who have to find solutions to a better life, one with a life with hope. So let me, what the procedure will be that each has about 20 minutes and then uh, we will immediately open the floor to questions from the audience. Uh, you should put that in a chat box or the question and answer box, which is available. Um, I guess we will initially try to prioritize the students if we can, but uh, we hope there will be enough time for many others to join. 
uh, because we appreciate the fact that those who are joining outside the class are really interested in this subject. Um, and after that, after that round, we will enable, and they will have questions and answers. You can decide whom, which particular one you want to address your question to or to both. Uh, and at the end, we will give them, say, maybe five minutes to summarize what are the, what are the key points they want to leave with you and all of us before we end at 12. All right, so let me now, um, with great pleasure, introduce Nin Sapalo. You should unmute so that we can hear you, Nin. Uh, okay. Hello. About her experience primarily with the Tiboli on uh, where she served as initially a consultant to assess how is their work going and what does it mean to them as well as to the funder of a project that she was examining. So Nin, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning po sa lahat. Good, good morning to the University of Peace students and to the audience. Thank you very much to the Department of Sociology and Anthropology um, for hosting this and for inviting me to join the conversation. I'm just going to share my screen. Here we go. I hope you can see that. Yes. Okay, so um, Dr. Jane and Dr. Mary Celis um, invited me to talk about uh, my experience in uh, doing field work in a development context. So that's what I'm gonna share with you. Um, so let's start with the term engaged anthropology. So many theories about it, so much uh, has been said about it. We have the likes of Nancy Shepherd Hughes. We have the likes of Sherry Ortner writing about being engaged or militant in their anthropological world, uh, work, but um, we don't know what it looks like in practice, right? So it's not really a linear thing with a template that we can follow. So I'm going to share what it looks like in my work. And then we have to deal with uh, engaged anthropology in the Philippines. Is it a new thing here? Well, uh, apparently, um, engaged anthropology can be traced back to, for example, the 70s because it was intertwined with uh, theoretical and social movements such as feminism, uh, Marxism, post-colonialism, uh, colonial studies, and um, the like. So what's going to happen is um, I just realized earlier today that uh, uh, some of the students, uh, the University of Peace students, have been given the report that I wrote, uh, which I will be discussing today. But for those of you who have not been able to read the report, I'm just going to provide a very short uh, context so we can level off. So last year, uh, which seems so long ago now, right, um, I was hired as a consultant for an NGO that was funding an ecotourism project that was pitched and designed and is being implemented by LACY. So LACY is short for Lake Cebu Indigenous Women Weavers Association Incorporated. Uh, they were founded in 2000 and they are based in, of course, Lake Cebu in South Cotabato in Mindanao. So the Tiboli people, uh, Tiboli is a term that uh, comes from the word tau or people in Bilil or uh, the hills or the slope. So the Tiboli are people from the hills, but the Tiboli uh, at present do not really, are not confined in the hills. Some of them live near bodies of water or in the lowlands. So I think I need to share with you a little background about the CY. Uh, La CUI was founded by Janita Eco and uh, Jelly Escarlote. Uh, Janita is a Tiboli woman and uh, Jelly Escarlote is an Ilonga settler in Lake Cebu. So um, back in 2000, they set out on a mission to spread the gospel. They were devout Catholics. And so they wanted to share the gospel to their uh, community. But the problem was uh, they realized um, indigenous women in their community refused to engage or had no time to engage in church activities, um, had no time to go to church services. Um, and uh, their insistence eventually paid off. Um, so the women started going to church, but the husbands um, usually reprimand their wives and uh, they hear couples fighting about how the church and their faith won't really get them out of poverty, won't really help them feed their children. So that was when Jelly and Janita realized that, okay, so if we want the women to have a better standing in life, if we want them to, you know, um, be part of the development that we, we envision, 
um, we have to work with, we have to work to address the problems of the community as a whole. And so they realized and investigated, when they investigated about the social economic conditions and um, problems of the women that, you know, cases of violence against women were uh, really rampant in their community. And so they organized the Tiboli women around issues of women's rights and cultural heritage. And ever since 2000, they struggled really long and hard to gain the community's trust and um, respect because the Tiboli society is really patriarchal and feudal. In fact, um, once a man marries you, a Tiboli man marries you, makes you her uh, his wife, um, what happens is if he dies early, uh, an, an untimely death, you have to marry his closest male relative because technically the family owns you. So Janita was aware that this was not fair and this was not right. And so she um, organized women on the issues of women's rights. And then um, come 2018, there was an NGO that was willing to fund um, La CY and its vision of an ecotourism site um, around their community, but um, there were problems that emerged in their partnership. And um, I was asked to investigate that. I was asked to evaluate how their partnership as NGO and a grassroots community was going. Um, and I was asked to um, share my recommendations on how they can move forward. And so um, we'll go to the challenges. Um, the first challenge was if you read Pat Kaplan's article, um, you're going to see there that they were initially given, you know, 28 days, I guess, to do the consultancy, to evaluate, to do the field work, to write up the report. Um, on the other hand, I was given three days to go to the field um, initially and to write the report. I was given a week. But um, I really struggled there because I negotiated for my time in the field to be longer. Because, of course, um, three days is such a short time to actually get to talk to people and get to know their views about the projects and what the project means to them, right? And so another issue was, of course, I was an outsider. I was a stranger to all of them. So if I was only given just three days to interview and get to know what they think about the project, um, I would be, I, I would have a really tough time getting them to trust me enough so they can tell me what they really feel, right? And then um, another problem that emerged was um, after a few days, I realized that most of the challenges that they had, both the NGO and the grassroots community, um, was about their varying ways of looking at culture and looking at development, right? So. I'm not going to go into detail, but um, if you read the article, you realize there. I'm going to share with you one instance where this was um, highlighted. So there was a time when um, La CY was given the opportunity by the NGO to feature um, the homestays and the ecotourism project on national television. Because um, as I said before, um, the executive director of the NGO had links, you know, to major TV networks and to big businesses. And she was wanting to fundraise for La CY. So she wanted to feature La CY on national TV so that we can, they can get, um, you know, tourists to come into their um, homestays. But the problem was, the homestay was yet to be finished. Only one homestay looked decent enough to be featured. But um, another problem was the cultural aspect of it because the Tiboli have this tradition and have this notion of blessing a structure, a house, um, or um, you know their different uh, towers, the Gono Hofo, for example, before people can sleep inside it. So they call the ritual makat. So it, it needs to be done on a full moon and the community needs to bless the structure and get rid of the evil spirits in it, right? So um, I was there while they were discussing it and it became a heated debate. And I saw how La CY struggled to convince the NGO that, hey, um, we worked hard to gain our status in this community. We worked hard to earn the respect of our elders. If we're going to push through with this um, shooting for this uh, television show, this is uh, we're gonna be banned and we're gonna be 
the act will be a taboo in our community, right? Um, but I saw the NGO negotiate and say that, hey, we can do camera tricks. We can just play with the angle to make it look like um, you're sleeping inside it and you're enjoying your time in the homestay. So that was um, one warning sign for me and, of course, for the, for the CY. So this is what the homestay looked like at that time. So it was far from finished. It does not have windows. It's, um, it, has, it has no furniture inside. And so uh, if you can see in the background, that's where the CUI's cultural heritage um, building is. Okay, so another challenge would be their varying notions of development. Um, I realized that for the NGO, development for them is um, having less UI earn a consistent, sustainable income and giving jobs to the Tiboli women of the CY. Um, whereas development for less UI seems to be seems to come in a different form. For them, development means implementing their project um, according to their culture, according to their life ways. And so I saw this um, varying notions of development clash when the NGO um, suggested the construction of zip lines. And of course, um, my research partners actually laughed so hard about it because they couldn't imagine how a zip line can fit in their community. They, they don't even know how to use it. So I, I showed them a video of how zip lines work and they couldn't really wrap their heads around the fact that there's going to be a zip line in their community just to attract tourists. And so there is this issue of how we view culture. Maybe we, maybe most people view culture as a commodity, something that you can sell on television, something that you can market, something that is objectified, like an object, right? And then I realized um, development projects and development practitioners, no matter how good their intentions are, have to be very care careful when they intervene in community um, issues and um, um, community concerns because I realized from the project because of the NGO's extreme focus and support for the CY, the community, other community members that were non the CY members um, kind of looked at the CY uh, enviously. So they refuse to engage with the CY and they say, ah, oh, they're, 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 they're the NGO's favorite. The NGO doesn't care about us. They only care about the CY. So in short, it caused a rift between the CY and their community members who they want to um, really enjoin and serve with the, uh, their projects, right? And then, of course, because the women had a lot of things to do, so they were training um, for the opening of the homestay. They were learning how to farm different um, vegetables, different fruits, uh, fruit trees. Um, they were learning to build their own abaca farm. And so the husbands were reacting because the husbands, because they're from a patriarchal society, the husbands are saying, why are you never home? Why don't you take care of the kids? Why don't you cook for us, etc., etc." So um, the CY actually engaged the men uh, later on because they realized that you know if the women start earning a lot from the project and they don't pay attention to their husbands you know it's gonna cause a long-term problems between those uh the husband and the wife and the ngo did not um realize that this can happen too so that was another challenge for them and for the cy and then um when i was starting to write the draft of my findings and my recommendations um, I was asked by the NGO to use a milder language because um, according to them, I was so political and I seemed like I was biased against them and I was writing for um, the CUI. And then I, I argued back that, you know, you want me to write this recommendation and these findings. You want me to feature the good things and, you know, water down the bad things. But... It's my responsibility because I know that if I write about the good things, only the good things, you will then, of course, have more funding. But at the same time, that will cause more harm if you do not address or if you did not address the issues that I pointed out or that I am pointing out right now.
And so there was this struggle. I ended up writing four drafts. So it was like an internal issue between me and the NGO that I had to um, go through, I guess. And I only met the executive director once. And she was very charismatic, but she was also convincing me to word the findings in a better, milder language. So that was very difficult for me too, because it's, it, it's really the first time that uh, I was asked to do that. So there have been, for me, four um, major highlights from this experience. And one is this. Um, uh, usually, the actors, the stakeholders in a development project, meaning the NGO, the community, they usually act uh, with good intentions, right? They usually say, I'm doing this from the NGO side. We're doing this project because we want to help the Tibolis, because we want to help the CY. And the CY will say, we are doing this because we want the good for our people, for our community. So you realize there in my interviews with them that they are acting because um, they act on something, they decide on something because they think that is the good uh, uh, or that is the best for all stakeholders. But we have to realize that that's not necessarily bad, but we have to realize that stakeholders are a product of their social cultural context and they have their own value systems, they have their own worldview. And these things, these biases, these affect the way they decide and look at things. And that's very important for anthropologists or social scientists to consider. And then usually I get asked by colleagues or by friends who are also in graduate school, um, since you're doing engaged anthropology mean, so do we usually have to be um, the kakampe of you know, the community? Do we always have to side with the community? It's not about taking sides, basically. Uh, it's never gonna be like that. It's not as easy as that, right? So I always um, make it a point to remember that at the end of the day, the community will always bear the consequences, will bear the brunt of our decisions and our actions or our inactions. And so that must be you know, a crucial reflection point for us. It doesn't necessarily mean that we, you know, we take the side of the community all the time, but we have to realize that um, they're the most vulnerable party in this um, equation, right? And then I realized that most of the problems that arose from the partnership between the NGO and the CUI were caused by um, the lack of feedback mechanism, the lack of consultation, I guess, because most of the uh, problems, the local problems, had local solutions. If only there was a working feedback mechanism, there was, you know, this ongoing conversation about what their goals are, what the objectives of the projects are. And lastly, I realized also that communities are not monolithic, you know, just because your uh, person is um, identifies as Tiboli doesn't mean he acts for the benefit of um, uh, his community, right? So there's this importance and this emphasis of having a keen eye of paying attention to what development scholars um, call the power brokers or people inside the community that have you know, more social capital or more um, uh, cultural capital that the community listens to that uh, can influence the community. So it's important when you do interviews or when you do evaluations, uh, consultancies, when you work with communities, you figure out and chart who these power brokers are and you make it a point to also talk to those who, do, who seem to not have powers in the community at all. Okay, so um, getting them, both parties, to realize that they have different, almost opposing notions of development and culture was just secondary. The goal was really to invite all actors to learn to think anthropologically, which means to Nancy Shepard use, to understand actions in a specific cultural context, make sense of them, and respond with compassion. So I think this is very important because, you know, when we're doing consultancy projects, it's time-bound, you know, it's very time-bound, we're limited geographically Ge geographically as well. So what we want to do is to impart the knowledge of 
anthropological thinking, the, the skill of how to think anthropologically in very simple ways, not naman new theoretical ways. So um, here, I'm just gonna detail um, the challenges, the contradictions that I am still trying to address right now because I still try to be an engaged anthropologist or a researcher in whatever engagements I have. Um, so there's this uh, thing that I've been thinking about, you know, the myth of the detached or distanced researcher. So there's this question that um, Sherry Ortner posed, um, where we have this illusion that our presence leaves no trace and that we don't have an impact in the community, right? But actually everything about fieldwork is dialectical. We affect the consciousness of our research partners in the same way that they affect ours. So we bring to the field our biases, values, and worldview. And sometimes if that does not fit community's worldview, then there will be challenges, right? But it's not really that important for you to compromise to their worldview. What's important is you are you acknowledge these differences in notions of, um, for, for example, um, development of progress of poverty, and you you work your way through understanding their notions. Right? So in this um, instance, the ethical principle of doing no harm is really more important than keeping your distance because we can never really we can try right, but an engaged researcher is not concerned about distance. An engaged researcher is more concerned about issues like vulnerability, about harm, about the benefits of research, right? Okay, so the next issue, the next question I get asked by friends is that, um, can we really be neutral in our work as researchers, as social scientists, trying to understand things like social injustice, like um, human rights, etc.? And then there's always this follow-up question that asks, if we are engaged, if we are too political, can we ever be scientific? No. So um, I love this quote by Shepard Hughes. It guides me up to now. And she says, you know, it's very important to be as scientific as possible, to be as accurate as possible, to do rigorous scientific research. But we have to remember that all facts are necessarily selected and interpreted from the moment we decide to count one thing and ignore another. From the moment we, for example, use uh, this theoretical framework or this method instead of another, right? So anthropological understanding is really necessarily partial. And then I have this quote from Sherry Ortner. She says, to take an engaged stance does not in any way conflict with an adherence to the principles of accuracy, uh, evidentiary support, and truth, which are the basis of any kind of scholarly or scientific work. But she differentiates um, two things. No, She says, the only difference is that the biases of work that does not define itself as engaged tend to be hidden, while the biases of engaged anthropology are declared upfront. And so uh, I think these are uh, one of the important uh, keywords collaboration, dialogue, and partnership when doing engaged anthropology. Because as Bakken says, um, anthropological knowledge is something produced in or through human interaction and not merely extracted. Because we um, engage uh, the engaged mode of anthropology or social science research um, is aware and conscious of the fact that research as an enterprise has not been very kind to indigenous peoples and to vulnerable populations. And we acknowledge that and we think about that in, in ways that can influence the way we do our work. And so another issue that I've been discussing about with friends and of course with Professor Mary Russell is this. So do you mean we can represent the poor? Can we speak for them? And I realize we can never do that. Please don't do that, right? But what we can do is we can speak with them. We can speak, for example, with I can speak with the Tiboli. I feature their voices in my work because their voices are more important than my voice, right? So the prerequisite here is really to foster, you know, mutual trust, a sense of solidarity and compassion. And, you know, 
when our research partners, when we spend time with them, when we share our world to them, the way they open their worlds to us, they trust you. They, they begin to trust you. They begin to think of you not, an, not as an outsider, but you know, as a friend, not just as, uh, as a researcher, right? And sometimes in my um, re, uh, field work, I get um, too close actually to some of the um, community leaders. And then they always convince me to, okay, ano yung sinusulat mo? What are you writing now? Um, can you write about my work? Make sure that my story is there. So then you realize that they trust you enough so you can work together to write whatever it is that concerns their communities. And uh, another quote by Nancy Shepard Hughes would be this. She says, you know, seeing, listening, touching, recording can be, if done with care and sensitivity, acts of fraternity and sisterhood, acts of solidarity. Above all, they are the work of recognition. Not to look, not to touch, not to record can be the more hostile act, the act of indifference and of turning away. Okay, so in summary, I think engage anthropology, this is what it means to me. Engage anthropology is reflexive and attentive to asymmetries of power. Of course, we acknowledge that um, uh, research, you know, is something that is still experimenting, I guess, on how to be more compassionate, especially to vulnerable populations. Um, Engage anthropology also has, you know, tinges of political economy also because we tend to pay attention to power and power relations in communities and in institutions, etc. And um, in teacher anthropology is always in partnership or in collaboration mode with people and communities. And further, um, there is this moral imperative for engaged anthropology to engage the public and to laymanize theories, laymanize concepts, um, to contribute to public discourse, maybe public policy and public opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Neen. I, I think what, what you have shown is uh, um, the role of the anthropologist as researcher uh, is, is really has many, many facets which are, are really quite controversial and, and you have to deal with it as it as, as you progress through uh, that learning process. So we're very grateful to you for bringing out what many of our students have said, you know, we've had a lot of the theory, uh, but how do you do it? Now, here's one really wonderful example of how you do it. There is no laid out plan. You do have certain concepts, but it, the local context, what people are, the lives people are living make all the difference as to how you then interact with them uh, for the purposes of information, knowledge. Now we can turn to uh, Dr. Joel Kanudai for your uh, presentation. Dr. Kanudai. Unmute, unmute. Okay. I always forget that. Um, thank you, Mary. Thank you, thank you, Neem. Um, I, I think what I'll be talking to you will tie up uh, pretty well uh, with Neem, although we didn't talk about this. Uh, it's it's probably part of uh, the way uh, we engage the community and part of the practice that that we have seen uh, through the years. I I, I should say that um, I, I view field work as a form of intervention, and as an intervention, it's also a form of or a position of power. Um, uh, in a sense, it may not just be that as field worker, as field, as researchers, we'll be dealing with power, but but we ourselves occupy that particular position of power. And, and we're entangled with it. We're entangled uh, uh, into, uh, into the community, into, into the processes that, that's unfolding in the community. And also our position is entangled in all of these uh, relationships. And the entanglement goes all the way to uh, not just our position, but, but who we are, our identity, our, our class, our, our subjectivity our culture and of course our gender is very much a uh, part of, of, of this uh, uh, relationship. So, so in many ways, 
field work is a position uh, uh, relations and uh, whatever you do as a researcher uh, you will, will all be embedded in that relationship why because research is a it's a human act it's a it's a it's a human relations it is not that when you went to research you went into a different universe you're still part of the world you are being in the world and then in fact it is in in, in research and it is in doing field work or or doing even archival research that 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 you are that, that we are all entangled uh, in that uh, relations of power now while while field work is an act of intervention but there are also many other ways in which this act can 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 actually be expanded and and, and viewed uh, in and 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 also acted upon uh, beyond just a power relation kind of engagement uh, like like all of the practices of humanity we can we can find ways in which uh, we can we can think of how to extend the interest that we share the common interest that we share as people as as humans as as you and i as fellows uh, uh, to to one another and 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 humanity had for a long time developed this notion of solidarity uh, solidarity to, to the plight of others, empathy to the, the condition of, of the fellow person uh, uh, in, in, uh, in the quest uh, to, to work together uh, towards a common purpose, towards a common good. Uh, and, 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 and that is the very notion that I think that where, where research should, should also go and can also go and may also uh, uh, move on that area, that, that, that link, that universe of solidarity. Now I'm I'm saying this again coming from a perspective, coming from identity, and, and also coming from my gender, um, and 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 my position, uh, and um, to say this is also to reveal oneself, and 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 therefore I should reveal myself as well uh, in the tradition and the practice of what we would uh, normally call reflexivity that that Neem had uh, uh, tackled uh, early on. I, I see reflexivity as reflexivity as uh, as, a, as a mode of reflecting um, to to be critical of not only of the others, not only of the structures, not only of the power relations that we are exposed to, but also of what we do, the, the very position that that we are in uh, as we do uh, research, and 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 that includes our methodology, our uh, our theory. And and beyond that, uh, our political position, our social position, our ideology, even our faith, uh, and and even uh, our class, uh, and and also our standpoint. Uh, why why is 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 that so? What why 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 we need to to to, to probably reveal that and to expose that? Um, for one, we had to come out uh, with an open hand, open arms, open mind. And, um, and and an, an open to be an open book uh, in all of this relationship because we are engaging uh, in this arena uh, of, of power relations uh, that I was talking about uh, and, and on that matter I should I should say that that uh, my perspective my, my my position my reflexivity is rooted from where my ancestry is where my roots is uh, I, I I was born in Mindanao Davao uh, a city in particular my 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 my, my mother was, was was born down further south in in, in davao she was born to a manobo uh, a woman uh, my grandmother who, who i never met uh, because she has long been dead when when i was born uh, but but my mother's dad um, uh, comes from up north uh, in, in in the philippines my my my, my father um, um, would trace his ancestry uh, to to iloilo and and they would trace their ancestry uh, in in return to, uh, to 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 a Chinese heritage uh, um, uh, elsewhere somewhere um, in the family tree that we could no longer trace that I could no longer trace. So uh, all of these are have, have played a role uh, in my upbringing, also in the shaping of my political position, uh, as well as of my uh, of, of my standing. And and then from this point of view, and then from this biography, from this from 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 this uh, roots. That that I would I would often look back on on how I approach uh, field work, and how I can actually approach uh, field work whether I want it or not. Uh, now, um, part of my biography, uh, of course, um, or or a significant part of my biography is the decisions that I took in life, 
um, going forward, moving forward, and and moving all the way to to, to where I'm am. I, I I I am or I was uh, doing research. I was I, I should say that 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 before going on uh, to, uh, to to research and to to, to the academy. I, I, I was a journalist that, that Mary had said uh, in the introduction and allow me to share my, my screen to, to talk a little bit more about my work and, and how uh, this work and, and, and those decisions um, career wise and, and, and political wise had uh, shaped uh, my, the, the trajectory of my research, my analysis, my engagement uh, with, with the community that I have uh, engaged with. Okay. Uh, you could see my screen, right? Uh, just, just tell me if I, if you do, if you didn't. Um, uh, the, 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 the picture that you see uh, are, are two of, of a few um, newspapers that that I had, I had worked with, that I had uh, reported to. Once the Inquirer, um, I, I, I reported stories uh, on, on on armed conflicts, such as. The attack on uh, a beach resort called uh, Pearl Farm. It's a it's a uh, it's a high end, uh, posh, very posh uh, uh, beach resort that was attacked supposedly by uh, the Abu Sayyaf uh, sometime in the 2000s, 2001, 2002. I, I'm also still connected with uh, a media outfit that, that's currently based in Davao. It's called uh, Mindanus. And um, straight from college, straight from from my undergraduate, I I, I work as a journalist. Uh, before I've worked as an anthropologist and as an academic. Now, um, all of this engagement had probably been as well shaped by the context uh, of which I was exposed to, of, of which I, I, I lived. I said, I, I've lived and I was born and I have lived for a long, long time uh, uh, in, in, in Mindanao um, until I, I, I did my PhD and had worked here. Uh, but, but, um, living in Mindanao and, and working there and, and also in the consciousness that, that I had gained uh, through the years, reading about the region. These are, these are the kind of, of highlights that, that, that you can see uh, from, from the region. Uh, 50 years of warfare, it's still continuing up to this point, um, um, despite um, processes that, that, that breaks these tensions uh, along the way to uh, peace talks and, and, and peace advocacies. Uh, but but you have all sorts of, of concerns so bombing siege hostage taking kidnapping of clerics kidnapping of businessmen murder of a catholic bishop murder of um, a, a muslim muslim leader a muslim uh, imam um, a, a burning of a town recently uh, the, the the devastation of a city uh, marawi uh, and, and 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 so much more uh, in 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 this uh, region that had been had been going on. So that's the context uh, where in which I I, I have uh, practiced journalism and and later on that may have also influenced my choice of doing anthropology or uh, doing an engagement uh, uh, to research and development. Um, uh, these are just a few uh, of, uh, of of the images that that you could see in 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 in, in the region. Um, uh, this was uh, this 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 area. Uh, in Sambuanga City was 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 the area that was uh, that was attacked and and that had been burned down uh, in 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 2000 uh, in 2013 um, and and and, and uh, uh, due to uh, an, an, an urban warfare armed conflict um, uh, engaged by the a, a rebel group called the Moro, Moro National Liberation Front and the government, but then um, this this area, this these places that, that you're seeing in the in the in the picture, uh, it's not actually, um, uh, shall we say, stranger to armed conflicts. The, the houses that, that you'd see uh, at, at the at the bottom uh, of, of of the pictures are houses of people who had already fled from wars years back. Uh, wars in the 1970s, wars in the 1980s, armed conflicts here and there, and 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 they thought they thought that they found sanctuary in that place until uh, armed conflicts had reached them. And 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 this this the the, the environment and the 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 area and and uh, the the general conditions that that that, that struck me that that I got attracted uh, to uh, uh, as well in my in my in, in my work. Um, now, 
in in these engagements, I I I'd had the privilege and and then probably also uh, the, the the unfortunate uh, position of of seeing suffering uh, uh, firsthand, like like this group of of of, of kids and and women and and then elderly who had to flee uh, uh, a conflict that is that is quite of a complex one uh it's a it's a conflict between the state armed group and the re the local rebel armed group uh but then it was also entangled into a family feud a a huge family conflict wherein two families are armed and and are aligned with one a politician who's also aligned with the military and and the other one uh, the other family is aligned with uh, with with the local rebel groups and and when a conflagration uh, flare up, they feel like this. Uh, they they bring all their their their, their things, uh, their their bikes, their their rice, the sack of rice, their food, uh, or whatever they can cook, uh, and they even take with them their refrigerator um, um, because they they thought that uh, in in past uh, conflict and in past. Um, uh, displacement um, all of this will be gone the moment that they're out of the house because thieves would come in um, um, or, or whoever uh, would uh, would come in to take away their their, their things and it, it was quite a, a difficult situation um, they they would take all of their possessions uh, with, with with them so th that's the context that that that, that I, I I work with uh, in 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 my uh, professional life. Uh, as a journalist, and then later on, when 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 I did anthropology, and uh, when when I thought of, of of doing a research alongside with and and in, in the relation to uh, the armed conflicts, these are these are the things that that had that I had to engage. But then there are also many other other matters or other forces that that I had engaged with. Among them is this person. His name is Minandang Mamulindas. He's, he's a leader of those who were displaced. Uh, he would refer, or, and others would refer to himself as uh, the a buckwheat leader, uh, a leader of, of the refugees, of the internally displaced uh, persons uh, in the central Mindanao area. I had, I had become friends uh, with him, and, and we all converge uh, with, with a group that is, that is embroidered uh, in, their, in their shirt, uh, in their in their vest, it's called the Mindanao People's Caucus, and I I, I volunteered there. That's where I, I I met, and I also met uh, uh, Minandang, was also a volunteer, but also at the same time a leader uh, of the of of the displaced uh, in their in their community, and and with 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 him I met with many other uh, uh, leaders, um, uh, uh, the, the woman uh, Samira. Um, the, the picture uh, below Samira is Dato Saliling, a an uh, uh, an Arumanen Manobo uh, leader, but but who's also uh, a Bakwit, an, an IDP, and um, um, Primitivo Tibo Flores, uh, who's who's also an IDP, but but he was once a member of a paramilitary group called the Ilaga or the Rats, as as they would call it in the 1970s, uh, whom who was being feared to have terrorize uh, the, the the Muslim communities around the area and had been part of uh, those who had who had, uh, who had caused uh, displacement uh, in the in, in in the in the in the region and of course uh, uh, Minandang uh, below. Now when I met them they were already friends but but if had I met them in the 1970s they prob probably would 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 be at each other's uh, throat, uh, fighting against uh, one another. But but I met them in the in in a context wherein uh, they they had been working for for peace and they had been working for uh, securing their their places, not through arms, but but through the establishments of peace zones, and and um, guarding the peace, and 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 exactly. Uh, uh, the things that they had been doing for uh, for for quite some time already in the in the area when when I did uh, field work there. Now to do field work in this environment, I, I I thought that I couldn't just come as a journalist. I couldn't just come as an anthropologist. I couldn't just come as a development worker. I had I had to come as a person engaging and and establishing a fellowship uh, with uh, with them. 
and um, and of course you cannot just establish a, a fellowship without without sort of engaging um, with with the rules of the game and also with the structures uh, of, of of relationships. And and to do that, uh, what I did is to volunteer to the Mindanao People's Caucus, uh, which had set up a group called the Bantay Ceasefire, and and these are uh, uh, these are the group comprising of the Bantay Ceasefire. Uh, and and I'd, I'd volunteered uh, uh, with and and and, and for them, um, and 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 what we did was was actually to 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 do bantai, which means guard uh, or, or or security, uh, guard the peace. And I, I I've joined them, moving around the swamps of of, of Central Mindanao, uh, the rivers on in which uh, armed conflicts had 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 been had been. Uh, emerging uh, or a, a conflagration had been happening uh, and because they, they they moved there uh, to talk to the, the the parties who were on on, on tension uh, who had couldn't uh, meet eye to eye and 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 they would they would take photographs they would they would also uh, contact uh, people who can engage the military and who can engage the the, the other side uh, of the armed violence. And, and normally engage uh, the rebels as they do, and and here uh, we are um, um, uh, joining them in their engagement with uh, with with the military uh, personnel that you see uh, on the on, on, on the right. Um, so that is essentially uh, what 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 I did, joining with 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 the committee and joining with uh, the the people uh, in this in this process. As I gather uh, data, as I gather uh, uh, insights on, on on what they were uh, doing. Now, um, in in this position, in this in this uh, in this engagement, I also get to, to to meet other people in the in the different side of the armed conflict divide, like 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 this group, paramilitary men, um, uh, um, as they would call, as, as they're called uh, locally, uh, as as CAFGU. Uh, the, I think they're called the Civilian Armed Forces Geographical uh, Unit. Uh, it's a paramilitary group uh, endorsed by the state for the past 30, 40 years already. And, and, and they kept uh, uh, securing uh, places and, 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 and areas uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the villages, uh, supposedly uh, in, in retaliation or to repulse a rebel attack. Uh, I had taken this 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 photograph sometime in in 2004, 2003, 2004, when when I get to engage with them and, and and meet with them. So my volunteer work at the Mindanao People's Caucus uh, and with the Bantay Ceasefire, the the, the guard ceasefire groups, had, had had also led me uh, to uh, to supposedly the other side uh, of the divide, uh, this group, and and it also led me to to, to the rebel camp. Uh, uh, that that allowed me to, to to talk to them and and know what 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 exactly going on why why had they taken the kind of decisions or the kind of of uh, positions that that they have taken and it, it brought me uh, a lot of insights to, to to better know why why displacement happened and and why do people or particularly in this case why do men go to war and why do men uh, go to defend or or, or fight uh, for what they believe and, and what they stand for. Um, this, this engagement uh, led me to, to the publication of, of, of this book. Uh, it's called uh, Redo, Plant Feuding and Conflict Management in, in Mindanao. Well, I'm, 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 I'm part of it as a chapter uh, of this sprawling uh, book that, that talks about uh, the, the, the different dimensions, characteristics of, 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 of armed conflict. But, but frankly, this, 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 this information, this knowledge, uh, uh, which, which, which is uh, actually being, being accessed by many now NGOs, um, um, academics, and, and, and all the others, could, could not actually be, be produced uh, without, without me or, or without, without anyone here. Uh, engaging with with the community in the positions that 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 we have all taken, my my position as a volunteer and and, and my position as um, presenting myself as the fellow uh, of, of of the other trying to understand 
uh, what the conflict is and, and how the conflict looks like on the ground as they are unfolding. Um, on the ground too, um, it, it provided me an opportunity to, to, to know better, not just why people fight, why people go to war, but why people flee, why, why people move, why people evacuate, why people decide uh, to, to take on uh, the, the mantle of being internally displaced uh, persons. And um, I, I, I've learned from them that, that uh, yes, being bakwit or being displaced uh, is brought about by the, the interplay of powers, the, the forces uh, beyond, beyond their be under control. But the decision to flee uh, is a decision that, that, that they themselves, they had to take. Um, yes, the forces of power is, is at play. It's, it's, it's there, it's staring them like a barrel of the gun, um, sometimes literally. Um, but but they, 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 they said that they still had the option not to flee. Uh, not, not, not to move away, not to evacuate, not to become an IDP. What's the other option? The other option is to become a paramilitary man is, or, or to, 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 join, to join the rebels, which they actually had done uh, uh, sometime in the 1970s. Uh, they, 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 they joined either. Um, some of them joined uh, the, the rebel leadership and, and, and had become foot soldiers of the local rebels. And then some of them had become paramilitary men, uh, and then until through the decades, through the years, as they as they uh, grew up and had uh, keep on facing the same problems, the same uh, conflict, they said that they realized that um, there, there's no point on on fighting on either side, and, and 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 so they said that they decided to flee because they chose peace. That, that struck me like. Fleeing is equitable to peace, and then they 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 sort of, they sort of ushered me into into a discussion uh, that 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 included the mapping of of where they're fleeing, uh, the the areas that that were were where they said that they had been uh, moving around, the areas that were where iron conflicts had been happening, and and how they also managed to 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 move away from it like a cat and mouse, uh, moving from. One place to another to avoid uh, uh, being caught by uh, by the conflagration, and 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 for them that is an act that they themselves had decided. It is an empowering act. It is not an an act out of mere desperation. It is a difficult act. It is it is an act that 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 shall we say should have not been done. That should have a choice that they should have not not made had there been no conflicts. Had 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 the guns were, 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 were silenced, but then it also offer us, take, took me uh, into, 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 a, uh, into a, a position, into a worldview wherein uh, you can see that in, in what is seemingly a helpless a position is actually not, not an act of helplessness, at least from their, from their point of view. And it sort of um, made me reflect reflexively that, the representations that 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 uh, that I myself as a journalist uh, uh, for for many years have been making uh, of them as victims may not exactly capture the, the the whole point, the entire point of the suffering that that we're seeing uh, on the ground. Um, the suffering are far more complex, and 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 in that suffering we can actually see the human spirit uh, very much. Uh, very much in play, very much, uh, very much asserted. Uh, uh, no matter how limited it might be, at least from my perspective or from the perspective of many. Um, and and uh, so these are these are the places where where where, where they showed me uh, the areas uh, where they had uh, been moving around. Now, apart from that, apart from 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 showing me uh, places where they move and 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 go, uh, uh, some of them. Um, like like uh, Minandang, uh, whom you can you can see here, uh, and which I have also written uh, in 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 some uh, uh, some 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 write up that I did, that he he once had decided to actually join the rebellion, uh, not as an active uh, uh, soldier, but 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 part of their militias, part of 
those who would who would keep their eyes and ears open if the soldiers would come around. But that is way way back in in in, in the 60s, in the 70s, uh, during the Marcos uh, dictatorship. Um, but in in recent years, he also realized that that position didn't really didn't really do him and his family as much good as 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 the good that they would have wanted it. Uh, so so they decided. And he decided, along with many others, uh, to work with NGOs, to work with the church, and, and, and also to, to, to be part of the Batai ceasefire. And then later on, while I was doing volunteer work, uh, um, he told me, and, and, and many others told me that um, if only they had a cell phone, uh, if only they own a cell phone, they do have cell phones, but very, very limited, uh, very, very few. But they said that if they could have a cell phone, they could have immediately report they could have immediately uh, passed on information about the movements of any armed men that come into their community, either rebels or soldiers, with, with, with the hope that by, by doing so, uh, the network that they had established with the NGOs, civil society, and all the way to the military, to the police, to the rebels, and, 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 and to other uh, um, uh, forces uh, around, uh, would spread out the information of an armed movement and, 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 and hoping that that information from the ground, texted from the ground, from, from, from where they are, uh, would alert the, the, the peace panels, the, the higher echelons of, of, of government that a war might brew, a war might, might, might happen, and a conflict, a shooting, uh, a shooting event uh, could transpire that could lead to uh, more suffering. And exactly what they did uh, when when they got the cell phones. Now, how did they get the cell phones? Um, so I, I, I said I volunteered. I was there at the right time and the, the right place when, when they told me that. I didn't buy those cell phones. I, I told them that I think I know of some journalists who had been offered by a telecom uh, 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 corporation that this journalist could, could, could grant to this telecom uh, if, if they need cell phones. Uh, to cover far-flung areas, remote areas, uh, and 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 shoot back the report to their uh, to their editorial offices in Manila or elsewhere, and uh, I told that friend that 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 perhaps those cell phones can 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 be channeled to uh, the 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 evacuees, the, the the IDPs, who could report about this 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 incidents, uh, these events uh, from the ground, so we can prevent uh, a conflict. And um, my, my, my journalist contacts, my friends and, and, and colleagues in, in, in journalism said that was a good idea. So, so they talked to the officers of the, 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 the telephone company uh, who responded well and, and, and just asked that if the IDPs, if the, the, the Bakwit could, could, could write them a letter, then, then uh, they, would, they would take the cell phone uh, to them in their, in, their, in their village, in their community. And exactly that's what, hap what had, had happened. Um, I, I asked him to, to write a letter that I could, I could send uh, uh, to that group of journalists who would then send uh, the letter to the executive of uh, the, the, the telco, uh, which he did. And then they send representatives there. Uh, and in fairness to this telco, they didn't advertise it. They didn't, they didn't, um, uh, they didn't bring camera crew. They didn't bring cameraman to, to to, to say that they have done something good. They just give, give, gave it to them. Uh, but then, um, in a sense, this kind of engagement, this kind of, of an outcome is, is what I would consider as, uh, as, as an act of intervention, but it is also an act of solidarity. So um, being in field work takes you in a position of power. Why? Um, um, for one, because we, we have networks of our own and we probably also have resources. If not resources, we have connections uh, that, 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 that we, can, we, can, we can bring. If we take those, those connections, those, those relationships, those, those networks right in the, in the, in, in the, at the time that, that we do research and, and not wait for the outcome or the output of research to be written, uh, uh, to, be, to be produced, then we can already do uh, uh, something, something else beyond the outcome of research, the, uh, beyond what, what, what we, can, we can write. We can, we can, we can offer a, an act, 
that 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 people would would really probably need at that moment of, on, in in time, and 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 that need may probably mean life and death, as in this case, peace and war, um, and 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 by that intervention, turn into an act of solidarity. Uh, we we I, I I would like to believe that uh, somehow um, um, another research paradigm or or um, some other ways of, of, of doing research can actually be done is actually possible apart from just getting information from the people whom we are interviewing the people whom we, we, we would be getting facts from but 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 actually working with them with with the things that they actually need um i i i reckon that many of them didn't need the book that 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 i had written uh, afterwards it's fine. It, it exposes situation on the ground, but it probably didn't stop the conflict when they would want this conflict to actually stop, to actually end. And 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 for them, what would 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 end a conflict? What would break attention? Uh, would be a text message, if only they had a, a cell phone. And exactly, that's what they 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 had they had done. Um, now. So, so these are interventions, and and as I've said, interventions um, um, uh, is a position of power, uh, and 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 the more that 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 it it probably challenges us to uh, to to work in solidarity because because of uh, the the problems associated with intervention and intervention in any other form, research or doing actual development work on the ground can be problematic. And I, I, I saw this firsthand in the same region, the same area where, where I had been. Well, the picture that you've seen here are not dead, dead, dead bodies. Uh, they're, they're kids um, uh, uh, of, of, of Eva Quis uh, who had, who uh, sort of held a play uh, before a group of government officials, secretaries of the peace process, uh, the, the the I think the, the top officials, top brass of the, the the armed forces, officials of the rebel groups, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, had descended to this place uh, to see and, and and to witness an event uh, which which they called the uh, the the unfolding, the 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 launch of a spaces for peace program or project. Uh, de declaring the area that had that had always been affected by armed, armed conflict as spaces for peace. Now, so so they held that um, um, all the 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 evacuees, the MILF was there, the rebels was there, the 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 armed forces was there, the top officials of the land was there, and uh, the NGOs were there. I was there. Um, researchers were there. Uh, journalists were, were 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 also there. But uh, since I volunteered. I, I I didn't live with with the officials. I didn't live with the journalists. I, I stayed on. I stayed on for days, weeks, months, and 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 to know what went on, what 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 happened. And there I had I had realized that um, no matter what good intention um, uh, we 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 may we we may have, uh, as what Nin have had said. And, and and no matter how 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 well planned and and how uh, how participated by 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 the different stakeholders our intervention uh, uh, could be, it could and may still lead into trouble, especially in in a very sensitive area, a conflict area, uh, such as the area where where, where I had done uh, fieldwork in two thousand four. What happened there was, according to to, to this lady uh, who had. Uh, been very accommodating and had had, had been telling me stories, uh, her and, and and many others uh, in the in, in the area. Uh, they had to, to to establish their own local group. Um, um, it's not really an NGO, but but they're they're part of uh, of a church, which is called the Immaculate Conception Parish uh, um, uh, group or volunteer. Uh, that 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 would also have. Muslims, Moro, and and other ethnic uh, uh, groups uh, uh, among the among the volunteers, they, they had come together because they they realized that no matter how good the, the the project or program is, there are things that that would happen afterwards 
Because there, there would be unforeseen events or unforeseen circumstances uh, that, that could affect uh, relationships among people in the, in, in, in the community. Like um, they, they were telling me of, of, of stories where an international, international NGO uh, that, that came to, to, to the area, to the place, uh, bringing with them um, um, assistance uh, for, for a water, water pump. Uh, um, to, to construct a water pump, um, the, the the NGO and and and, and them their, their group had had done everything on the books that they think uh, would 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 be right would be correct in the spirit of uh, co-creation uh, co-production of a project. Uh, so they 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 met with all the stakeholders. They talked to all the stakeholders. They met with with uh, with priest with with imams, with, with religious leaders, uh, local leaders. They, they met with different families. With, they, they met with a lot of people uh, just to, just to, to establish uh, a sense of, of, of consensus about the project that, that had to be, uh, to, to, to be built by, by, by an NGO. And um, there were no opposition and everyone were, were welcoming of that project. And, and, and so the, the, the NGO uh, built the, the water pump uh, that, that then was, was enjoyed by many until another member of the family, the pump was, was all built already. Another member of one of the families uh, in the place reacted that, why did they build the, why, why did they, 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 they set up the pump uh, in, in, in his land? Uh, and that was his land and that, that, that he, he, he thought that he was offended by the, by the establishment of that pump in that, in that, in that, in that land. But that land turned out to be a contested land. So there were layers of, of claims uh, over that land that, that led to attention in the place. So someone had to run away, someone had to hide, someone had, uh, uh, someone had, to, had, to, had to flee. Uh, um, one side flee to the rebels, another side uh, flee, flee, fled to uh, the government, um, uh, the, the, the soldiers that, that led into some confrontation. So learning lessons from that, this, this group said that um, no matter how good uh, an intention is, they had to do something because there, there might be some other things that, that, might, that might crop up. So the, the, the image that I, I, I showed you uh, the previous slide, uh, the picture of, of the children performing about their, their, their lives uh, before a, a group of dignitaries. Um, soon after they left, they went on house to house uh, family to family, talk to them, process them about, about the event, about the coming of the MILF, the coming of the rebels, the coming of, 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 of the armed forces, the coming of the, the highest officials of the Philippine government, uh, and, 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 and process them and talk to them um, um, if, if, there were, if there were any problems, if there were any concerns. So that was their, their means of addressing the conflict before they flare before it can it can go uh, uh, out out of hand so I, I realized then that any other project whether it's a research project it is an intervention um, a development intervention project big or small research can be small uh, it can have an impact uh, onto the, the the community and and sometimes the the, the impact uh, may, may 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 yet not come until they come until until they happen until they flare up uh, that is just the nature of, of, of some communities, especially uh, the, the, the broken, the more broken communities. But, but it's also probably the same in, in a family. Uh, uh, some of you may, 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 may have family members who, who may react after the fact uh, when, when everyone had a consensus. When this happened, and, and, and this is part of the environment uh, in which uh, I did research, and and it's not just my research that 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 is exposed to it, but many other uh, forms of engagement, their own local engagement, the government engagement, NGO engagement, so on and so forth, and all of this had to be factored into into the relations. Because as I've said, intervention is a relation of power, and as a relation of power. It affects uh, 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 local relationships, personal relationships, cultural relationships, of course, political relationships. Um, now, um, now this, this, this 
area, this arena, uh, uh, this engagement, as I've said, uh, placed me in a very privileged position that allowed me to write a book, uh, Bakwit, The Power of the Displays, because um, I, I, they, 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 they sort of, they sort of welcomed me to, to, to their community and they, they sort of exposed uh, and, and uh, trusted uh, me, their, their, their stories. Not exactly because of what I did, but, 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 but it's just that it's part of the flow of, of, of everyday life that, that we position into that flow of everyday life. And the consciousness that, that we, we, we play some kind of a role, a role that could, that could further break an, an, uh, a broken place or uh, a role that could, could, could break a non-broken place is, is, is actually very much, uh, very much part of the equation and, and the things that, that we need to factor uh, when, when, when we had to do research. Um, I'll, I'll move on a little bit. Um, uh, another work that I did a few years after I had done uh, research uh, in, in the central Mindanao area. Now this time, uh, in another place in, in Mindanao, just to, to offer some happy thoughts uh, probably in this, uh, in this talk. Um, so uh, a few years after I've done research there, I've, I've, I've done research to, uh, uh, in an area uh, in, in, in Sambuanga City called Barangay Mariki. Um, uh, this was this was May 2010 when when I did uh, my field work there. I befriended this guy, uh, who's an artist, who's a singer, uh, and 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 but but whose roots has also been a root of armed conflict, displacement, so and so forth. And the houses that that you're seeing there are houses that were built throughout the decades after the residents there had fled um, uh, other armed conflict areas. They established a sanctuary, a community in Sabuanga. Until 2013, uh, that exact this exact spot is this spot. Um, it was it was it was raised uh, by by a conflagration between uh, government forces uh, and and um, the rebels uh, who had fought in that in that place. Uh, these are these are the places that I work uh, with. Uh, May 2010, and then 20, this is 2013. Uh, um, when 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 I've been there, um, and 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 many of them had been had been displaced again uh, in, in 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 well scattered by the winds uh, in in Sambuanga City, um, uh, in well, living in this in this squalid uh, um, uh, conditions in this in this environment, but then but then something else is going on uh, in this in this displacement. Yes, there are suffering. It, it's staring you. Uh, um, um, staring right at you as i've said like like a barrel of the gun uh, almost literally but but alongside this the the, the 2010 2013 uh, uh, field work that i've been doing in the in the in, in the area had also exposed me to to a group of talented people really uh, talent in its literal sense uh, that that allowed me to work with them co-produce things that that they said um, uh, are the things that that they they had to do uh, because they had to do it uh, as, as part of their livelihood and as part of their identity and as part of who they are. And, and, and this is what, what we're doing. Um, I'll, I'll play the video. Now, that was me several pounds ago, several kilos ago. And these are my interlocutors, the, the, the people I'm engaging in research with. As you can see, they're dancing because they're producing music. They're producing uh, uh, songs and 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 we do that sometimes. This is another place, a, 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 a more a more posh place, uh, but 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 all of them have roots in in in, in armed conflicts. They produce music uh, uh, because um, uh, this is the way that 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 they live. Uh, I I photographed them. I, um, I I also recorded music with them because they asked me to record their music. And, and the music that I record, I give it back to them uh, in the form of MP3 that they in turn form into, turn into a video, uh, which they then sell on the streets of Sabuanga that goes all the way to the streets of Sulu, the streets of Basilan, and, and sometimes it goes all the way to, to, to Malaysia. Now, the, the, the guy there uh, um, um, taking some pictures was me, but then they also take pictures of me, like 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 this guy, as as I was working with them. Uh, so the gaze turned back uh, uh, onto me. 
uh, in, an, in, in, in an act of, of, of a relationship among fellows uh, uh, engaging. So I was there to do research, but, but they were there asking me uh, to record the music uh, through, through, my, through my computer. The computer is, is right there hidden a little bit. Uh, and, and, and hoping that I could give them back the, the MP3, which, which, which I did. I, I, they would also ask me to take pictures of them, which they turned into um, um, a compact disc uh, uh, music that, that they sell in, in, in Samwanga. So uh, this, this one, they, 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 they form a band called the Blackstone uh, Group. Again, they, they, they were children of Evaquis, and, and they actually had evacuated uh, in, in 2013. Uh, and, 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 and they had to just continue their, 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 their lives. And, and, and some of this uh, music had, had, had made their way to, to, to YouTube. I'll, 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 I'll share you um, just a few bits of, of how this music would sound like. So it was their production. I, I, it's my MP3. They turned it into a video music. Later on, they uploaded it to, 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 to YouTube. That's one. You can see there are already 12,000 views. Uh, the other one, uh, their favorite, which is about a music about an earthquake. A rock music, which they also turned into uh, an MP3 that I produced for them. Their own music, which they turned into uh, a video sold in Sabuanga and then and then they also use this as a way to advertise their talent because they 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 are wedding performers wedding singers were in they earn some 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 money so these are acts of co-production and as we co-produce uh we 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 reproduce uh what do we reproduce we reproduce livelihood we reproduce uh identities we reproduce culture culture uh bottled or um Publish in the compact disc, and then they shared uh, this 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 cultural production across uh, Samwanga. Se sell it in the in the market like this, alongside with all the pirated uh, DVDs and and and, and VCDs, uh, and 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 then sold to the, to those who would want to consume it. And they would also, as I said, use it as an advertisement to advertise their. Uh, their talent so that uh, they could be hired as wedding singers. Now, something something interesting happened here where, where I would close my, my, my sharing. Uh, this one, when I, when, when I, I, I in, in my first few months of, of doing field work in Sambuanga, I, I, I noticed this concert, this, this poster in the market. It says, Concert and pangalayan, meaning dance for peace. Concert for peace. Concert and dance for peace. Now, what, what attracted me was, uh, you see that arrow there? Uh, I, I encircled it. Uh, watch for this concert soon. Venue and date will be announced later. Inshallah. Or um, so God, uh, 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 so God help us. Or... Um, we leave it to the to to, to, to the heavens uh, uh, for it to, to 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 happen. I saw this. I asked this guy. His name is Sunny Boy uh, Sakilin. Uh, he said that um, are you uh, because he was he was he has he has a, a stall. He he, he sells uh, DVD just beside this 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 poster. I asked him, do you does he know something about this uh, this this poster? I haven't met him. Well. Uh, we, we were not friends yet. Later on, we became friends. But but I was I just I was just curious where did this poster came from. He said, "Oh, I put that up uh, because these these guys, the the, the pictures that, that you're seeing, are his artists." Uh, he was he was saying, uh, "It has been his dream that they could hold a city concert uh, uh, with with dances and music for peace. Their 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 notion, their version, their their idea of of what peace is." And then I, I thought that hmm, I've seen this film before, the, the cell phone uh, experience that I had uh, in, in, in central Mindanao. I said that, uh, and so, so we, 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 we became friends uh, later on. And then I, 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 I asked him whether, if, if he would be interested to meet some, some, some of my, my, my contacts at the, at the NGO community, if, if he would be in, if, if he thinks that, that the concert that he's thinking uh, could could be supported by that NGO if they would also allow uh, the, uh, that kind of support. 
And then he said, he readily agreed. He said that uh, we've been waiting for that all along, that, that someone uh, come will come and, and see this poster and the, the very reason why they set this up. So, so, so people will know that they have a plan because they didn't know, they, they really don't have any idea to whom they should, they should go uh, and, and present this plan. And, and I, I introduced them to the staff of Act for Peace program. It's a United Nations multi-donor trust fund. Uh, that was set up in Zamboanga. And uh, the, the, the trust fund head, uh, when, when, when he saw uh, what, what he was doing and, and when I introduced uh, him to them, uh, to, 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 the, to, the, to the artists, uh, he was immediately, well, uh, the, the, the head of the, the Act for Peace said that uh, it, it gave him the, the crips, it, 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 it made his hair stand because he said that he's been listening to their music, he's been listening to their art all along, but never knew who they are. They're, he was just wondering how, how this music came to be, but he was busy doing development work in conflict areas that he didn't have the chance to, to come and, 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 and see the sidewalk to see that there are people like, like, like them. And, 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 and readily he gave his support. He didn't give them money, but, but he gave them equipment equipment that, that, that they could, could, could own uh, afterwards, the, the artists could own afterwards. And um, word spread around that a concert would, 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 be, would, be, uh, would be held and, and people began practicing, be, people uh, began uh, preparing for it. And, and, and then people began um, um, producing programs, uh, makeshift programs uh, for, for, for the concert and the concert did happen. In, in Sabuanga City. My estimate is that about 5,000, 6,000 people had, had attended the concert uh, in, in one of its main park. It's called Paseo del Mar. It's the, it's the main park in, in, in Sabuanga that was attended by the mayor, attended by priests, attended by imams, so on and so forth, and, uh, and, and attended by many artists. Uh, and, and in the end, they had successfully launched a collaborative co-produce a uh, program out of that endeavor. Again, part of it was, was made possible by, by fieldwork intervention that, that, that I did, but I'm sure that they could also have done this uh, on, their, on their own. It may take some time, it's just that I came at the wrong, right moment and at the right uh, place. So uh, what I'm saying here is that um, fieldwork is an act of intervention and therefore it's also an act of of, of, of power relations. But being an act of, of, of power relations, it also locate us, place us uh, in a very unique position uh, to, to turn around the, the relations of power and then and, and, and build the, the basis uh, for solidarity as, as we move and, and um, locate, position ourselves with the, the, the people whom, whom we think and whom we thought that we not only serve, but, but we need to establish uh, solidarity with as our fellow other, as our fellow human, as, as people who could be asked uh, if the tables were turned around. I end there. Um, I may have taken a bit of time, but I turn it over to Mary. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Joel. Um, I'm sure many of you were listening saying, are we gonna get a chance to ask questions? And I hope that we can have another 15 minutes anyway. Um, if that's a problem, Melise, uh, let us know. Because I just could not there, no, I could not stop Dr. Kanudai bringing out these rich experiences that showed us, gave us many insights. You know, among them is research is not something you do and then you wait for the results and then you act. But an engagement of research means you are part of a process. You have a certain level of power. Uh, if you are uh, modest, you will benefit others from your own power. And that's, I think, what he showed that uh, in, in playing many roles, once people begin to understand that you really are on, if you want to say on their side or are part of their struggle in a uh, in the picture of unity. Now, I, um, Melise, can we check that we have, can we do 15 minutes? And if those of you who have, uh, among the students especially, if you have other obligations, feel free just to check out. 
but let's take 15 minutes. And if I don't hear any reaction from Melissa, I assume that's okay. Yeah, it's, it's okay, Prof. Mary. Okay. All right. So I think Jing, um, uh, we'll, we'll we, have, see. we have some questions here. Maybe we can start with the questions from our students. Um, actually, the first two questions I'm not able to see anymore on my screen. I don't know why. But anyway, it has something to do with uh, asking, has there been a change in the, in the community? This is really addressed to Nin, our first speaker. Uh, did you notice any change in the community? I guess she's referring to uh, any change in the way they related to you. Um, as a, you know, as an anthropologist uh, in their in their community, and she was also curious about how was that uh, issue about the filming, <laughs> how was that resolved? Uh, how how did it end? Because that, that uh, you you illustrated a, a conflict there, no? Uh, and she's curious how that how that ended. Uh, there's a second uh, another set of questions uh, pertaining to possible dynamics between the community and neighboring communities. Uh, that might result in some jealousy if, if you have any experience regarding that. And also within the community, uh, a related question is, for example, a, a, an NGO who enters a community would have specific targets and goals. Uh, and it may cause some perception of bias because not everyone receives benefits immediately. And it leads to community resistance toward the project. So according to the principle of do no harm, can we say that it is that projects have distributional impacts and, and so how do you how do we handle such situations maybe those questions first okay um i actually prepared scribbles of notes just so i stay on topic but i guess um for example um yeah i'm gonna share an update of what happened to the community uh, i left um i was there april 13 to april um 18 so just one week i wrote the report and then I heard back from Manang Janita in Jelly um, a few weeks after, and I asked how the shooting went because I thought it was uh, it, it went on as scheduled. So apparently they agreed to move the shooting to a much later date. Um, I think they agreed to shoot it on May 19, I guess, and it was featured. But the problem that arose there was. Um, a lot of tourists um, plagued Janita and asked if they can book um, a homestay. And so Janita didn't know how to answer. They didn't have enough manpowers. They're, they did not receive any training yet on how to operate a, a homestay. Um, and I wrote a rejoinder to the report um, as per Manang Janita's request. And then I wrote to the executive director. But the problem was um, the executive director passed away um in august or july last year and she was such a charismatic leader and executive director that funds came pouring down on the ngo because of her personality because of her as a person so when she passed away um they couldn't uh, sustain the ngo so before she she died of a terminal illness so before she passed away she actually talked to um, big businessmen owners of malls and um, foundations to actually continue and sustain what um, their ngo has been doing with communities but the problem was um it was it was not in writing and they did not have a contract so la ui was left alone and um right now when the coronavirus happened it was only then that the new foundation um, contacted them and told them that, okay, we're going to help as much as we can. So uh, that was devastating for La CY, of course, because they were they didn't know what to do with the homestay. And they were so ready to open it this year. But the trainings were put on hold. The funding was put on hold, etc. And I guess um, for the other questions, okay, um, there was a question about how do you ensure safety in the field? Um, one of the things I, I make a point to do when I go to the field or before I go to the field is to connect or contact to, uh, any NGO, any organization doing work in that field. Maybe there are grassroots organizations already existing. I need to touch base with them and I request for an orientation about um, what the community is like, who can I interview, 
etc. So sometimes I also watch out for gatekeepers, um, people who um, gatekeep or you know hold positions of power. For example, um, it's always been advised that you know newcomers to a community coordinate with local government uh, officials. You go to the mayor or you go to the barangay captain. But sometimes, um, you know, there are barangay captains that are not kind to his constituents or have a bad reputation. So going to his office can shut you out from other people's homes or from people sharing their stories to you because they affiliate you with these gatekeepers. So it's good to have an orientation about the community. You can do research online, but it's um, pertinent that you talk to NGOs working there, you talk to friends, or you talk to grassroots organizations that have their chapters there. And um, the next, maybe, okay. Um, I think you, I was a consultant in that, my role in that equation was a consultant. I was not the development practitioner. I think it's important to, uh, uh, there was a question here about how do you democratize? How do you do participatory research in actual on the ground? Um, I didn't, I wasn't able to mention it, but I think it's essential that, you know, if you want to research about something, you go to the community first without, you know, a fixed questionnaire, a fixed research agenda. You venture out into the community, be respectful, and find out what's important to them, what matters to them. And maybe somehow your research can answer that or your research can enjoin them. Um, I've done I've done fieldwork with another another indigenous groups, the AITAS, and in that fieldwork, we tried to democratize the research methods that we used. So instead of the usual sit-down discussions, instead of the usual one-on-one -on -one interviews or the focus group discussions, what we did was we um, used participatory research methods such as counter mapping or mental mapping. We also used auto photography, wherein we left with the ITAS, the indigenous group, um, disposable cameras, and we asked them if you know, can you take pictures of what of the things of the places that are important to you? So they let the pictures tell their stories, and the pictures can be used later to probe further these certain important things for them. And maybe last, um, okay, one of the barriers I've realized is uh, if you want to do engaged work in a new community, one of the barriers would always be that you're an outsider, you are a stranger. So how do you mitigate that? You earn the, their trust. But how do you do exactly that, right? So you you capitalize on your social position. For example, in my case, well, if you see me in person, I'm quite small, you know? I'm 4'10", so I don't seem intimidating. I look like a kid. So I realized in my engagements, it was easy for me to converse and to, to you know, ask questions to mothers because they think of me as their daughters, right? As someone that's, you know, not suspicious, not intimidating, etc. So I realized also, because I look like a kid, it's difficult also to talk to the men in my case. So you capitalize on your social position. You talk about mundane things. You ask about, for example, where they do their laundry, where, where they buy their food. And in that way, you get a sense of their sense of space in the community. Um, one of the research methods I also use um, would be counter mapping and mental mapping. I want to know how they envision their community space. So instead of sitting down with them and asking them questions, I let them take me to the places that they frequent. I let them tour me in their communities. And in that way, I understand their own understanding of their community spaces. They they point to their kapitbahays, their neighbors who they think are um, full of gossip, they point to the barangay, um, um, the barangay hall, and they tell me, you know, anecdotes of how the barangay is either good or bad. So it's all about democratizing the entire research process from setting an agenda, from doing a research agenda in consultation with the communities to using participatory methods and to, you know, having the feedback mechanism, an ongoing conversation between you and your research partners. Mm 
Is, is it my turn, Jane? Yeah, we have uh, some questions addressed to both of you, actually. Uh, maybe I'll read them first. Uh, the first, the participatory approach encourages res researchers to empower their partners to demand structural changes. What if researchers fail to deliver such promises? Aren't researchers not supposed to give any promises? And uh, to you, Joel, also some additional questions. From your research experience, what would be uh, good tips when approaching a community that are probably already burnt out with answering questions uh, from several uh, researchers who come to their to their community, um, and then uh, also to you, Joel, your work involves engaging with militant groups. How did you establish trust, and how much involvement did you provide for them? Did you prepare a security assessment, maybe a security assessment before you went there, or how does it look like? Okay, um, who go first? Uh, I'm okay. Okay, I'll go first. Um, uh, thank you for those questions. Uh, probably to 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 answer uh, um, many of those questions that were raised. First is that um, I think before you engage in a research, especially in a place that that's very sensitive, that that uh, we're in, the relations of power is really right there, staring you at your at your face. Uh, right before your eyes. Um, the, the first thing that, that I think that, that we res researchers had to, to first think about is that we're not researchers first. We're humans, we're fellow, we're, we're fellow, we're the fellow other. We're a fellow countryman, a fellow citizen of, of, of the nation, a fellow citizen of the world, a fellow citizen uh, of, of, of humanity. So first and foremost, it's our humanity that had to be part of the calculation. This is where these this allegations were in. Uh, community, communities had research fatigues. They're always being descended into ask questions by, by researchers after researchers after researchers. Frankly, because the communities are being seen as, as subjects of research, as, as people whom we will ask questions from and, and we gather answers from uh, so we can write our, our research. We, we hardly, or many of us, sad to say, hardly look or view communities as, as people, as, as human beings, just like you and me, uh, who's, who has a shared interest, uh, shared, uh, shared dreams, and, and, and shared um, ability and, and capacity uh, uh, even. Uh, so the first thing is that let's, let's take out the, the, the researcher hat and then think that, that we are engaging with, with, with people uh, just, like the, just, uh, just as you would engage with, 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 your, with your family, with your, with your friends, uh, with your professors, with your classmates, first and foremost, so that we can see through the humanity of each one them and us, our humanity too, uh, in that in that engagement. Um, now, if if we if we come from 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 this perspective, the the, the question on on, on whether uh, we are overbearing uh, onto the community may may probably be more uh, shall we say thought through uh, by us because we already know that we're dealing with a fellow person and, and we get to be sensitive with what, what they are, who, who they are, what they feel and what they went through. And, and, and we could hear, we could listen to them. Uh, we, could, we could absorb how, how they feel even before they're, they, they would say what, what they're saying, what, what they're feeling, even before they can give you uh, feedback. Um, uh, so our fellow humanity or, or that, that essence uh, would be of a, a, a principal uh, take. So in other words, we, we don't do research just by flying in and then flying out. As in journalism, we call that parachute journalism. Um, uh, you, you go and get data and then you move out. That is the most exploitative relations that there could be uh, in, in any other engagement, whether it is through journalism or through, or, or through research. And this is where research fatigue would, would come from. Now, um, uh, you were asking questions of um, uh, is it all right to, to, to be friends with them and, 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 and can, can we be, make friends with them? Of course, we had to make friends with, with, with anyone, including our uh, interlocutors, because um, they're humans too. Uh, if, we, if you can be friends with your professors, if you can be friends with even your enemies, why not with 
uh, the, the the people whom we are uh, engaging with and then we had to invest uh, a, a relation we had to invest uh, uh, emotions uh, in that in that in that relationship now is bias involved bias will always be there because why we are subjective. Our research uh, uh, interlocutors, subjects are also subjective. We are engaged in an intersubjective relationship. Subjectivity means taking a position, taking taking a stance, taking a point of view, and and that by itself is already filtered by, as I've said, by your standpoint, by your gender. The gender alone is is already is already a position that that already takes you into a bias uh, uh, relations. Like for instance, um, if you notice. Um, in the announcement of this of this uh, uh, of the poster, I didn't include gender. Now I'm including gender because I don't exactly have a gender lens uh, in that in that relationship. But when I was preparing for for my presentation, I, I I remembered, as I keep on remembering that there are people that whom I cannot uh, really uh, interview, whom I cannot really spend a, a good time with, and, and 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 many of them are women primarily because of our uh, of our gender relations. Um, I couldn't just come onto onto some other people's home and then ask for the wife of someone else whom I could I could interview because I'm a man and and the same thing if if a woman was on my on my shoe uh, it it might be a different picture many of the pictures that you've seen that I I was showing are picture of men um, and, and and that already tells you a bias uh, perspective a, a standpoint uh, in that in that in that regard. So our very identity uh, becomes part of it. How did I deal with, with, with militant groups? This is where we're uh, thinking the other as fellow humans would, would come in. Militant groups are, are, are humans too. And as humans, there are humans and there are humans. There are militant groups as there are militant groups. So in other words, there are many other forces that, that we can deal with, with with people in the community. Yes, I did um, uh, a lot of security uh, uh, risk assessment, uh, formally and informally. Um, uh, it's part of the ethics review, the, the risk review that we that, that you would be go, go go through. But but I tell you, the ethics review and the, the risk review will only go as far. You 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 can you can write something else, but then the moment that you handed them over, situation can change on the ground. Um, Danger can 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 shift on the ground. Security can 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 shift on the ground. But because I have friends, my my informant as my friends, they are my my and and they trust me as I trust them, and and that mutual trust um, um, offers me a, a a good point of view. We're in we're in. I could assess security, and in fact, I'm not. While on field, I'm not the only one who was assessing my security. My informants as well are assessing my security. There are many times when I was I was doing field work in central Mindanao. They would warn me against going to that place and that place uh, because the the militants there may not be as kind to to, to my kind of, of opposition. And 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 so is in Sabuanga. They were they were warning me against going to this particular community because there might be kidnappers around. Uh, and or or moving on to some place in Sulu where when when I really really wanted to, uh, but but they keep on discouraging me. No, don't go there uh, because of, of of this and that that kind of a danger. So the trust uh, uh, had 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 to be had to be engaged. Uh, now um, so so the community uh, people would would have to be part of the equation, and 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 hence what we call that co-production co-creation. Uh, of, of a project and, and my project was co-created with them of course to some extent because I'm also doing theorizing in anthropology uh, which I myself didn't know what what theory uh, would, would would come out yet uh, because it comes out in, in in my writing years after I was out of the field and I, I I can't present that before I left the field because I don't know what theory that I could I, I could I could I could get from. But there, there are already things that, that that we can we can extend back to the communities. What we can do exactly the things that I had already uh, shared with you. But a few other things uh, that, that that had happened here is that uh, some of the writings that that I did, like the Rido the Rido book, and and also the the, the Bakwit uh, uh, book, when 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 before it came out, it was a different landscape uh, um, um, between NGOs and communities and uh, the military and communities. For instance, on, on, on RIDO, um, the, the reporting on events in Mindanao and also the way the military approach uh, um, conflict events in, in, in the region, uh, they, they look at 
people as if they're they're one and the same that uh, with, without without layering without without identifying who is what and separating whom from 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 what because th there are different forces at play on the ground until we began presenting our our research uh, uh, before before come aguinaldo the, the headquarters armed forces uh, of, of, of the philippines and, and telling them about the the dynamics of conflict while on the ground that there are rebels and there are there are rebels aligned with with other rebels and, and and there are people who are not aligned with rebels but are entangled into swept into the conflict uh, because of, of land conflict and other 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 issues the military listened and 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 the next time around i i i uh, I, I would monitor how they they approach uh, a particular conflict they are already quite uh, quite uh, discriminating discriminating in identifying if the enemy is the rebel or if that is a family uh, a conflict related to land, and and so are the journalists because we we have also presented this uh, to the reporters that not to lump any other conflict in Mindanao as a rebel conflict or as a religious conflict, and and then realizing that from the research, they're also very keen in in separating the the, the reports. And um, on on Bakwit, I I did notice some changes on World Bank policy after I read. What I read, uh, what I wrote in the book, quoted extensively in a in a in a World Bank report. It was not meant for the World Bank. It was meant as an academic exercise. Um, um, as I've said, I don't know if if this would hold, if if the the people in the committee would, would resonate. They did resonate, but but I, I I really don't know where up to up to what point will it resonate. But then it resonated with the World Bank. It resonated with with some NGOs. It 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 may have it may have hit some nail right right on the head but um the impact can can only be can only be done can only be approached probably outside of the research process outside of, of the procedure and and that means that there had to be a proactive way in which we engage with with the structures like in rido uh, after we've done our research, uh, had publications, we engage with the military, we engage with with the armed forces, right at the very leadership. In in Bakwit, I wasn't able to engage with anyone because I don't have the resources. But then I'm glad that it was picked up by, by by different NGOs and by the World Bank, and 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 they engage with it, and 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 one way or another contributed to 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 some uh, changes on the ground. But the most important contribution where I would end this is on what you can do while you are on field because you really don't know if your your writing will really hit the nail or your writing will be listened to by by by, by anyone else but you can already do something while 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 on field while while doing field work you can already make interventions and and just listen to 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 how the community would would want you to to perform a task and and, and perform the task in accordance to that cry that that begging coming from the community Jing, uh, Nin? Yes, Nin? Would you like to respond to some of those questions? Sige po. Ano lang, maikli lang po, no? Um, there was a question about um, about participatory research and about how, what are we gonna do if we don't deliver on our promise? Um, I think as anthropologists, like in my role as a consultant, I, I did not we should not promise anything right because the particip participatory approach has you know methods it's built in the research process you do not declare that after this research th these are the objectives i will emancipate your group i will help you climb out of poverty and as anthropologists or as human beings we cannot do that because we're not part of the group they can do that on their own they can emancipate their they can organize themselves let's leave them to that but what i think the role of an anthropologist is in development context is to help the parties disentangle themselves from the conflicts, sh help them shed light on their own, you know, help them become more reflexive about how their decisions, how these policies, how these programs and projects affect the lives of the NGO workers and at the same time, the communities that they vow to serve or they vow to help. I think that's the main goal. Unless you're a community organizer slash anthropologist, right? You can help organize, but let's leave them. Uh, for example, Les UI can do that on their own. That's why they built Les UI from the ground up, right? And then there was um, a question po about what if your um, research finding is kind of hostile or 
not very nice um how can you get that message across to your communities or to your ngos or the research funder i think anthropologists cannot make moral judgments about communities about ngos about if a project is bad or good what we can do is we have to qualify for example if we say that okay this community is practicing a ritual that's harmful we can say it's harmful to their health as a fact and we we qualify that you know with data so we always need to be accurate in our presentation of data and if there are biases included if we think that this certain ritual or this certain practice is bad you have to put it in your report that your bias is you think this is bad but you cannot impose that world view on the audience on the reader and on on the community so i think there must be reflexivity practiced when you're trying to write your research findings and you have to ask yourself is this really the fact or are these accurate facts or am i imposing my own opinion on this um report Do we have time for more questions? Uh, maybe just last two questions, if uh, okay. There, there's one question uh, again from our one of our students, to Dr. Kanudai. As a researcher, how do you reconcile the issue of bias, or uh, when you are working with a particular side in conflict, how do you address your partiality? Yeah, I, I, I think I answered that uh, uh, a while ago. Uh, that's. As I've said, our very identity, our our gender already place that, place us or put us uh, in the position of of bias in a in a in a in a subjective position. Now, what what I did in particular in this in this in this area, um, I, I I didn't I didn't exactly subscribe to 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 any of the positions, especially among the militant groups. Certainly not with the government too, uh, but I I I I place I took a more shall we say open open minded stance in, in just to understand why do people go to war why do people join uh, uh, militant groups and then why do people join paramilitary groups why do people join uh, and, and and become soldiers and they're just offering a position uh, of that without claiming that this is not a bias interpretation or this is a bias allocation just that this is how uh, it emanated from uh, from that uh, interaction but of course they were interacting with me as men as as, as fellow fellow male and 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 that by itself coming from them is already a subjective uh, uh, position now i i would like to return as well to the question on um on, on promises and and mean mean is, mean is right um never promise but at the same time, um, it's it's because that we are so so keen on on, on not promising that that we we just refuse uh, any other requests uh, in uh, because we're so scared uh, of, of of making false promises. That's also another extreme that that what we need we need to do, and and henceforth it's it's important and I think it, it's necessary that that we establish rapport, a deeper relationship in a community wherein this this uh, this. Um, position of understanding comes around and comes into play, uh, and 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 if and 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 also exposing ourselves, being naked figuratively, uh, uh, so to speak, uh, before before the before the community and and showing your limitations, the limits of your resources or the extent of your resources, the limits of your network and the extent of your of your network, because people will understand um, um, communities whether they're in the armed conflict areas or the poorest. Among among the poor, uh, they are among the most understanding uh, uh, people in 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 the world. They they will know and they will take you from from where you are. But it's also another thing if we come to 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 a community, uh, not just with the way that we're talking, but 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 in the way that we come. How did we we we, we arrive? Like for instance, if you come in a community in an SUV, which which actually many NGOs are are, are doing, um, not. Not the fault of their own, but but it's just that uh, international NGOs, especially, uh, there, there always is a standard NGO car, and and, and the car would always be uh, a Nissan Patrol or uh, um, the latest and and and, and the, the most the, the more expensive Toyota uh, or 
uh, or the more expensive Ford, uh, and, and then they come to the community. Of course, that raise that will raise expectations, and and um, uh, because you 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 come with shiny gadgets with with shiny things, it's 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 more of how you act and and you carry yourselves uh, that that becomes suspect than than what you are saying. You may you may talk the sweetest words that 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 you can you can talk, but they don't see that in your action. They don't see that with the, with the way that that you are uh, carrying yourselves. You don't see that with the way that you arrive in the in in in, in the community. That will see through and that will fall through, and and that would become uh, problematic, and and that will raise expectations, and that is even more uh, dangerous than, than than saying that. Uh, that not that really promising, but 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 then saying that let's see what we can do. We'll try. We know my limitations, so on and so forth. Um, th there's one question here. I'll just answer it. Um, uh, is there a risk of neighbor communities who can't engage uh, due to constraints of the project, or getting jealous and refuse to cooperate? Yes, as I've said, there is, and and it was exactly the problem that I was telling you in uh, in in that area in in central Mindanao, or in just a pump a water pump had had uh, generated uh, uh reactions uh, uh, jealousy uh, in, in in the community that, that that went to the point of of attention uh and in an area that is exposed to violence that that can be quite dangerous especially if people are armed or keeping firearms in their homes uh and and and, and hiding it from from anywhere else and taking it out uh, in times of, of, of tension yes it can generate that and, and so therefore there's a need to mitigate that and, and there are many ways of mitigating that and and among the ways of, of doing that is not just to come there as as a researcher uh, on a parachute and then and then go out but but to, to hang around if if you cannot do it because your 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 time is limited uh, you, you are working elsewhere then 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 find a way when when you organize a research a research project, Wherein one of the team or one of the network of the team would would be left behind just to know if you have done damage. So we, we say that do no harm. Yes, we do no harm, but there are situations wherein harm is done. Um, no matter what we do, no matter how conscious we are with the no, do no harm principle, because it's easy to say do no harm until harm actually comes. And in fact, I would like to believe that everyone else. The state officials, the rebels, the the, of course, researchers would never want to do harm in a community. And in fact, for some, it's actually quite insulting to be told and 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 be be, be reminded, do no harm, because everyone is actually doing do no harm. The 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 question is, how do you actually catch, uh, uh the the situation, or how how do you ensure that no harm is done? And then how do you catch a situation where actually harm is done, no matter what, what, what you've done, no matter what preparation uh, you've made uh, in ensuring that no harm is done. And, and the, the, the experience in that, that, that town in central Mindanao, the, the locals that, that I was telling you, they were the ones who would, who would comb through uh, uh, a project after, after its implementation just to ensure that, that no harm is done. Um, and, and if we can have networks like this, it, it, it's one way for us to to, to mitigate uh, this this situation, and and then and then of course uh, balance uh, the, the the impact uh, of our intervention. Uh, just this one, there will always be there will always be impact on on what we're doing on the ground, whether it's research, it's development, because we're doing intervention, and it's out of the everyday life. The everyday life already is not a perfect a perfect world. Whether you're in a forest park, in a in a posh subdivision, in a posh uh, community, uh, or in an, a struggling community, there will always it, it will not be a perfect uh, uh, relations and tensions can 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 always arise at any time, and and it, it's part of our our responsibility to factor that in the equation when we do research and when we do development work. Okay, yeah. I think maybe I can take over it from Jing. Thank you for the questions. I'm sure there are many more, but I'm uh, but for sure we have all been stimulated by the uh, contributions of both our speakers. I think if I can just add two things. One is one thing that came out very strongly is what uh, Joel Kanula speaks about. Yes, I have a 
bias because by definition, I'm an, a male, which means I feel more comfortable and will be more welcomed by other males of all kinds. Just as Neen said, I feel more comfortable being with women because uh, you know they will welcome me, they wanna to talk to me with men, it's more difficult. You don't have to see that as a negative. I mean, it, you know, when you say bias, it's uh, rather than call it bias, I, I would say, you know, you, you build on what advantages you have, right? You can't do everything, but you build on what you have and you try to expand from there. Uh, let me close by again, thanking everyone. And with one last statement I heard from a woman in Cotabato when I went to a village that had declared itself as a peace village. No more uh, guns, no, even military had to surrender their arms if they wanted to go into the village. So that had been going on for a while. And so I asked one of the women in the village, an ordinary woman, so what, what does, uh, you're now a peace village. What does that mean to you? And she said, you know, peace means I can send my five-year-old daughter here across the street to the Sari Sari store to buy one peso worth of salt and know that she will come back without being killed. That's what peace is to me. And those are the things I think that we need to look at and appreciate of how different people see their realities. We try to capture it and make it a force to enable them to find better lives for themselves. So I'm really grateful for our two speakers for bringing that out so eloquently. We thank all the participants and I think now we will have to close uh, considering we've gone way over time, but I think certainly it was very well worth it. So again, goodbye very everybody much. and we'll close. But maybe Nin and Joel, you can stay, right? For a while. Mm -hmm.